Hello there, I am Eric Angus McRae, founder of the Truth Crusade Project, and in this video we're going to break into discussion that pertains to the popular culture narrative of Darwinian evolution, and somewhat by inference or by extension of association, the concept of human evolution. For the purpose of this video, we are concerned with the narrative of the time scale or the evolutionary time scale for the dinosaurs. For those that are familiar in our popular culture narrative and in public schools, this concept that 65 million years ago dinosaurs walked the earth. And what we actually find when we look through various documents known to the scientific community but not very well known to the general populace is there is some very powerful evidence that is working against that narrative and the reason it becomes very troubling or problematic is you find as you look through these articles that information has absolutely been censored and suppressed now for those who read the Bible this does not come as a surprise according to the scripture those who are ungodly suppress the truth in unrighteousness there are those who are enemies of truth who want nothing but power and control over others and they exert power and control through creating societal narratives so that the moment that something comes that a piece of evidence that shows there's an issue with your narrative instead of dealing with it or making an adjustment to their information they instead persecute attack and seek to make disappear that piece of information or evidence and this is something that has happened in the scientific community in the evolutionary communities um, there has absolutely been suppression of information occurring again in the Bible this is not a surprise for standard human conduct we see this in the case of the Pharisees in that they made a cover-up um, for the resurrection of Jesus so this type of information uh, suppression it, it's to be expected but it's always going to be very disappointing and frustrating when you're dealing with this let's break into it so first the topic at hand is carbon dated dinosaur bones unfortunately there's a lot of elements here um, I can't make in one video an explanation very doing carbon dating justice as a topic it's very complicated there's an article I recommend the users read from creation ministries uh, from creation.com slash cab I'll put a link in the video I'll put links in the description and it describes the concept of carbon dating um, but the general point is that that you'll find consistently carbon dating is not reliable for certain time periods it, it really cannot go past a very long period of, of time and certain numbers are put out by bona fide educated scientists who have gone through university the ones who are accountable and honest saying this can't go past 90,000 to 100,000 years and there's a lot of interwoven concepts you sort of need to understand to get what that means um, so for one thing uh, a first important piece of data to know is carbon dating is used on organic substances organic material especially for creatures that were once alive and died or for things like plants or a human body or for in this case dinosaurs dinosaur bones it does not work on something like a volcanic rock or a piece of um, some slab of concrete that you just spontaneously find you cannot use carbon dating on just anything it's it's for organics the general concept is you have decay rates in the radioactive isotope of um, carbon 14 
and carbon takes many forms. You have carbon-12, you have carbon-14, but in the case of carbon-14, it has a projected decay rate, it has a half-life, and certain calculations can be made using that information to determine the approximate date that a creature dated with this method um, lived. However, it's not infallible in the sense that it's not carbon dating is subject to bloated numbers. In other words, because some assumptions are made in the calculation process, and the reason this is because the carbon 14 to carbon 12 ratio changes throughout time. Um, and that which we find in, in the elements, it's affected by historical happenings. For instance, if you speak with scientists who are doing carbon dating, they're going to tell you that they have to factor in the Industrial Revolution and all the chemical reactions, that kind of smog produced in the atmosphere affects that ratio. And once they run calculations, some of the scientists will say, okay, that's enough. We can, uh, we, we, they'll say that, quote, we know for a fact that apart from the Industrial Revolution, the rates have remained the same and the ratios remain the same throughout all time. And that's where the assumption gets dangerous because when you look at the literature of how carbon-14 is processed and the process it goes through in turning back into nitrogen-14, you find out numerous phenomena affect it. Cosmic rays affect it. Um, radiation in general and a variety of types of radiation affect it. And this is important because to assume that the rate and the ratios stayed the same before the Industrial Revolution, you'd have to assume that no significant, no significant earthly or um, celestial phenomenon happened that might have been able to throw it off. For example, um, the type of explosion created if a very large comet or meteor crashes into the Earth is, I believe that will probably throw off your, your carbon ratios, carbon-12 to carbon-14, the this calculation process. The ones the creationists, the biblical creationists point forward is if you have a global flood creating a rapid burial effect, there's numerous elements, and for those that don't understand, when you have this giant flood comes up, it's pushing all this sediment and living creatures are being killed and rapidly buried by that. Um, there's numerous elements there that will throw off the carbon dating, the interaction with the aqueous element, the um, process of burial. Uh, these are things that need to be factored for if they happen. So it's dangerous to just assume out of a bias that they didn't. And potentially any event of that level can affect th the ratio and we could have had multiple events happen throughout time that throw it off and again this is not this is really subjecting carbon dating to having exaggerated numbers um, in terms of if you get a count of 25,000 years the actual date for the life of that creature is probably or at least quite possibly, if not probably less. It, 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 there's no guarantee that it's 25,000 years unless you make a bunch of assumptions that are very dangerous and very reckless. Now, we'll have, again, another video talking about carbon dating. For this, I want to just break into the carbon dated dinosaur bones and the information suppression that's taking place. Now. I discovered this from the Creation Ministry videos, uh, Creation Ministries video, sorry, titled um, The Most Cutting Edge Fact for Creation. And they went through multiple aspects of the creation versus evolution debate, and they explained uh, in numerous videos the concepts of the debates of the time scale of the Earth and things of this, of course. They had some elements they went through in this video, but one was this particular story about carbon dated dinosaur bones and it was the one that most in particular had this information suppression element attached to it and I found it very compelling that that needs to be shared so let's break into this 
So to quote the um, Creation Ministries video here, in addition to all these, and all these is with reference to car, uh, not carbon date, sorry, uh, we found dinosaur bones. Scientific community has discovered dinosaur bones which have contained actual dinosaur DNA, um, dinosaur blood cells, and dinosaur soft tissue. Uh, actually, a list included blood cells, blood vessels, where their contents could be squeezed out, hemoglobin, actin, which is a protein, tubulin, another protein, collagen, again another protein, and histones, which is a specific protein for DNA, and, and actual dinosaur DNA. All these were found. Now, this is sort of known, um, but again, it's kind of purposely avoided, but I, th it hasn't seen the same level of suppression as this particular story. Well, in addition to these, dinosaur bones have been carbon dated, is what they described. And they say, now carbon dating has nothing to do with millions of years. And they explain that you can find the explanation for this on their Creation Answers book, creation.com slash CAB. And the information they provide there is quite compelling. So the argument here is that um, carbon dating cannot date something past, say, 90,000, 100,000 years. And the reason is because the carbon decay rates don't work that way. Beyond that point, there should not be any carbon-14 left. It's like the, the, the maximum possible projection you can come up with for, for carbon-14 remaining in a, in a specimen. Well, past 90,000 to 100,000 years, it's depleted. It, it wouldn't be in the specimen. So, despite that fact, we have dinosaur bones that have been successfully carbon dated. And now this becomes a problem because carbon dating can't date an organic specimen that was alive if it was in fact alive even a million, even just one million years ago, one million years ago, let alone 65 million years ago. It's something that only goes up to a very recent time scale at maximum 90,000 to 100,000 years. And many argue a lot less than that. Some will argue it down to 50,000 years. Um, so in this case, some scholars and scientists carbon dated dinosaur bones, and they came with a date range that was between 22,000 and 39,000 years old. Now even that date is subject to bloating because of what we discussed earlier, the assumptions that are made. However, so the issue is here that is that this carbon dating should not work on dinosaur bones. It shouldn't even be possible. Yet it did. They dated these bones. Now they, they explained, now there's a bit of drama around what happened with this discovery. The scientists involved were supposed to present their paper at a joint conference of the American Geophysical Union and the Asia and the Asia Oceana Geosciences Society and the two conference chairmen pulled the paper the guy did his presentation the paper was posted and it got pulled they pulled it from the website one of the reports on the conference said this afterwards, quote, The abstract was removed from the conference website by two chairmen because they could not accept the findings. Unwilling to challenge the data openly, they erased the report from public view without a word to the authors. And what do you call that? What do you call erasing a report of legitimate findings detrimental to the popular, cul uh, popular culture narrative? Well, you call that information suppression, suppression of the truth. So for me, I found this a very telling piece of information, but also, if not surprising, still very disappointing to see some of the stubbornness on part of these chairmen and I don't think they've chosen to be on the right side of history in this case. And that was a very interesting uh, evidence to encounter.
I'll make videos talking about the other ones. So I hope this will help clarify some of the dangers of just f blindly following the popular culture narrative that you find out that a lot of information is intentionally withheld from the public school curriculum. And there are multiple reasons it's done. I believe that there are some elements who are doing it from a moral perspective. These are people who absolutely have a athe I wouldn't even say atheistic, an anti-theistic moral system a tied to a worldview that is dependent on a Darwinian evolutionary narrative that's been formulated a certain way where they don't want anyone touching that or tampering with that because they want control over how humans behave and they've made that their reputation and their power. I believe there's other groups that have different motivation that they don't necessarily aren't focused on the moral perspective or thinking about the th potential theistic implications of uh, the danger to a change in dates or something like that. The other element is just sort of human comfort. Uh, people are conservative. They're that sort of, why does it matter? Why should we now go through the whole effort of unhinging massive elements of our school curriculum and doing a big overhaul? That's a lot of work. Uh, the problem is because truth mandates a lot of work. Truth is always worth a lot of work. If you don't put in that lot of work, you have no truth at all, and you have a very miserable and depressing world to live in, where everybody is running away from actual facts and data uh, that is inconvenient to them, and refusing to deal with it. Um, and I don't think that's a good place at all for humanity to go. And that's it for this video. Shalom and peace to you.